Hello and good morning. I'm Ethan Feller from Zach's Investment Research, and this is Momentum Mondays. Today we have a lot to cover. It was a busy week in markets last week, and so to prepare you for the week ahead, we're going to take a look at the economic calendar, see what's going on. We've got a handful of earnings, a full calendar of earnings to take a look at, and then I'll share with you a few uh, technical trade setups in stocks with top Zach's ranks. Last week, we had some pretty interesting action in the market. Uh, we've been looking at this technical level on the S&P 500 around 43.30. Uh, we bounced off of this lower bound, and we were sort of holding this level in the beginning of the week. Um, but interest rates continued to rocket higher, and tensions in the Middle East uh, continued to rise. And that instilled some feel of the fear in the market, and we saw some pretty hefty selling uh, in the second half of the week, clearly taking out this level. And we're now approaching this lower bound of the uh, this downward channel. Now, I, I sound like a broken record, but I still remain bullish through the end of the year. If we test the bottom of this uh, range, um, we got this very important level at 4,200, which is where the market sort of broke out in the first half of the year. And it would be a logical place to retest before maybe taking some final legs higher. I want to take a look at the NASDAQ chart. Actually, first let's take a look at rates. You can see the 10 year tested 5% this morning. Uh, it's the first time in 17 years. And uh, <clears throat> with higher rates, it's going to just put pressure on the economy. It, you would expect it to start slowing the economy down, um, make it harder to pay loans, take out loans. And it's just it's just a crazy development in the market to see rates uh, rocket higher so much so quickly. And it's, it's th there's nothing immediate, no immediate developments from it, but it has investors worrying about what, what effects it might have. So yeah, let's take a look at the NASDAQ, which looks quite a bit more conducive uh, to higher prices than the S&P. Really holding the same range that we've been watching the whole time. Uh, we tested the top, and we rolled over last week just like the S&P. See, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday was pretty heavy selling. Selling in the morning, selling right into the afternoon session, right into the close. Same thing Friday. Sold off right into the close. Um, so this is the NASDAQ index. I'll just show you what's happening in the futures this morning. So we can see this morning we penetrated this lower bound and reversed higher. I don't want to try to bottom tick the market but maybe you know maybe we saw a low this morning in the futures um it, for me i think this is a logical place for the market to at least have a relief bounce uh after so much selling we sort of found uh sort of looking a bit oversold um another a couple of other developments i want to just look at really quickly is gold has clearly caught a bid uh, as a flight to safety during these rising tensions in the Middle East. It moved over the last couple of weeks aggressively higher off of from uh, 1850, and it tested all the way up to 2000 last week. It's breaking out of this kind of uh, channel, sort of bull flag thing, and uh, it looks it, it's looking quite bullish. I mean, we definitely want to see it above 2000. Uh, at the end of this week to sort of confirm maybe that we'll see higher prices. But that was an interesting development. And a quick look at oil, too. I, I didn't find any particularly appealing gold mining stocks. But, uh, you know, if you're a gold investor, something to watch. Oil, again, it's not picking up quite like you would expect. I mean, I sort of would have expected it to be above 90 by now. Um, it saw some strength, definitely some pick, picked up some buyers, but it's still trading in this kind of wide range between 81 and 95. And, uh, so we'll keep an eye on that this week to see. And so let's take a look at the calendar. It's a fairly busy week. Um, Monday, not too much action. Tuesday, we got, uh, Home price index, services and manufacturing PMI. 
Wednesday, new home sales. And Thursday starts to get interesting again. We got GDP. And we can see that the last print was 2.1% last quarter. And the current quarter is expected to be 4.5% annual growth for GDP, which is just very fast. And uh, there's high expectations. So we'll see um, how the market reacts to that. Initial jobs claims, another one that we keep highlighting. We have yet to see any pickup in initial jobless claims. It's at secular lows. The last print was below 200,000. This is just about 200,000, 206,000. So again, a surprise to the upside. This is the first indicator we want to look at to say, okay, maybe see a recession. We, we got to see it above 250,000 at least to even start to consider that possibility. Uh, some other data, durable goods on Thursday, trade balance, retail inventories. Um, and then Friday, big another big number, we got PCE inflation, which is uh, the Fed's preferred measure of inflation. And, you know, this, this you know, especially jobless claims, GDP, and inflation, that all plays into the Fed's rhetoric around what is going to happen with interest rates. What is their interest rate policy? And are we done hiking rates? Uh, is there going to be one more rate hike? And we'll see. Uh, I think we looked at the 10-year interest rate so much higher already. Uh, a few Fed members have noted that that should add additional tightening without them having to do anything. So I think we're pretty close to the to the point. Maybe one more interest rate hike, but probably not. So uh, not this week, but a week from Wednesday, we're going to have the next FOMC uh, interest rate policy meeting. So we got that to look forward to next week. Now, also, um, we're right in the midst of earnings season. It's going to be a really busy week. Got almost 1,000 companies reporting earnings this week and a handful of big ones. Last week, we saw Netflix and Tesla were sort of the big ones. Tesla had a big miss, uh, showed a considerable slowdown in sales and earnings, falling profit margins, falling earnings. Sales growth was only about 9% annual. Alternatively, Netflix had a great quarter. Uh, their attempts to cut down on password sharing looks to be working at great growth and the stock was up considerably higher. So Monday, we got Cadence Design Systems. Uh, later day on Monday. Tuesday is massive. We got Microsoft, Google, Visa, Coca-Cola, and a few other important ones, Visa, General Electric. Um, this is going to be key to see what happens with the NASDAQ and the SP 500, I mean, these are in the top five holdings in both indexes. So we could see if that'll be the catalyst to break those technical levels that we're looking at or possibly put in a low. Wednesday, we got Meta platforms, big one uh, T Mobile, IBM, Boeing, ADP, CME Group, all worth keeping an eye on. Thursday, Passive, Amazon, MasterCard, Erk, Shell, uh, UPS. And then Friday, we got the oil giants. We got ExxonMobil, Chevron, um, as well as AbbVie. So definitely, these are going to be major catalysts all throughout the week. You, you definitely want to keep going to keep an eye on earnings, and it'll it'll give you a real tell on how the economy is doing, how corporate America is performing. And again, possible tells on economic slowdowns, which sectors are going to be good for next year. So just keep an eye on that. Um, so now we are ready to get into the technical trade setups. Uh, first one here we got is Furtive. It's a stock that we looked at before. Um, it's a Zack Strike 1 stock. It's a fast growing um digital infrastructure company. Um, it's got great growth rates. Uh, it's got a very reasonable earnings multiple, trading at 23 times forward earnings. It's got upward trending earnings revisions. It's in the top 12% of the Zacks industry rank. And the stock has been great all year. So let's take a look at it. So because of the sort of uh, the index losing these important levels, some of these technical sort of momentum type of stocks have seen their charts sort of broken. 
and there's not a whole lot of clean ones to look at, admittedly, and that's not a great sign for the market, not a great sign for these uh, momentum stocks. But uh, we can see Vertiv broke above this uh, breakout level and had a reversal. But however, you know, we're seeing it hold this lower level. We saw a nice reversal on Friday. And because it's been such a great stock all year, I, I like to focus on the stocks that are leading and continue to focus on it, especially if it maintains its top Zax rank, which Vertiv has. So seeing it hold this lower level, kind of like the setup actually on the weekly a little bit better. Uh, some people measure their levels, you know, with the wicks. I think the closes are actually important to watch. So we couldn't see a weekly close below 3630. We couldn't see a weekly close above 40. So those are the levels that I'm watching. So there's a nice clean bull flag. Um, it's still got some work to do before we see a breakout. So if we do see a breakout above 40, I think that's a pretty clean breakout and um, is worth considering buying. However, um, below this 36.30 or $36 level, um, I, I think you might want to wait and uh, let earnings settle or let the market settle before we start looking for some of these momentum trading setups. So I noted before that oil, uh, so we're going to move on. I noted before that oil um, has been really strong or has been relatively strong, uh, but it's if the tensions remain high in the Middle East, um, especially if Iran continues to get involved, we can expect that supply to be cut off and, and that'll that'll put a bid under the oil market. And so I want to highlight uh, this oil company. Uh, Petrolio Brasileiro, Brasileiro, excuse me, Petrobras, often referred to, it's a Brazilian national uh, oil company, uh, biggest oil company in, in Brazil. Uh, it's got a top Zax rank, so it has uh, upward trending earnings revisions. It's got an incredibly low uh, earnings multiple, just 4.4 times forward earnings. And um, it's got a really strong stock as well. Very strong price action. Uh, it just made, so this is the three-year highs. So last week it, it punched through that level and it's building out this little tiny bull flag here uh, right at the three-year highs. And unfortunately, it looks like this uh, conflict in the Middle East is going to continue on and that should keep oil prices bid. And uh, so I, I recommend keeping an eye on this uh, PBR stock. Um if it can break above Friday's high around 1640, I think that would initiate a breakout. Um, however, if we see it below 1610, say $16, um, again, you know, maybe that's going to be reflecting lower oil prices, soothing tensions uh, abroad. But uh, this this is a setup we're keeping an eye on. Oil oil is definitely bullish for now and these oil stocks are good ones too and the last one i want to note is uh coinbase this is the bitcoin and crypto broker uh, it's the biggest name biggest american name in, in the space and it's got a zax rank too so it's got upper trending earnings revisions um and it's uh it's been it's been challenged this year but just this morning, we're seeing some interesting developments in Bitcoin. We're going to take a look at the Bitcoin chart first. So Bitcoin is clearing $30,000. And I don't know how how close the investors keep an eye on this, but uh, Bitcoin is up 100% almost year to date. And it's nearing year to date highs, which would be about 32000 Surprisingly, it's it's acting sort of as a flight to safety, I think, during these um, sort of stressful times with uh, rising uh, geopolitical tensions, and it's uh, it's being bid. I mean, it's it's doing better than stocks over the last uh, couple of weeks. It's doing better than gold, and uh, so you know, Bitcoin is kind of a conundrum, kind of an enigma, but you know, it's going higher. 
uh, amid these sort of crazy times. So that's why I want to keep an eye on Coinbase and Bitcoin. Coinbase stock, uh, it's traded sideways most of the year. It's off of its lows from earlier this year. It, it's actually doubled as well off of its lows. However, those were nearly its all-time lows. And over the last year, call it, it's traded totally sideways. Um, but it's putting in some higher higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. And um, it's building out this kind of nice consolidation here. So it's definitely something I want to keep an eye on. Sort of like a hedge, you know, which would uh, be interesting. If, say the uh, market continues to roll over. Uh, we could see Bitcoin continue to trade higher and possibly Coinbase as well. So I'm looking at this consolidation. If we see Coinbase above 78.50, let's say, or $78, um, I think that would that would call a technical breakout. Alternatively, we don't want to see it reverse lower like we sort of did here. We saw a breakout and reverse, we saw a breakout and reverse. Um, but a close above this level, um, again, I think that's a good good for a breakout. And I think below, I mean, this is the lower bound of this consolidation. So if we get below 67, again, below 72, you want to be nervous, but it'll be totally broken below 67. Hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, please like and subscribe to the channel. And if you want more information from Zach's, you should definitely sign up for the promotion in the link in the bio. And that's all for today. I hope you had fun.